what do we make of the state of Israel? Is it the first steps of the redemption or is it totally off? You know, on the one hand, it's not the state that we want, obviously. And on the other hand, though, we seem to be in the midst of this. We're kind of in between. We're in the process of Geulah. So what, how do we make sense of this? What I want to suggest is that this isn't new. This isn't the first time in history that this has happened. This has happened before. You know, King Solomon said that there's nothing new under the sun, right? History just repeats itself. And we've actually seen this all before. If you go back 3,000 years ago, we came out of Egypt. Bnei Israel came out of Egypt. They come to the Holy Land finally. And what happens then? They were supposed to enter and they were supposed to conquer it entirely and settle it and to create a proper, divine, godly kingdom. But is that what happened? It did not happen. Yoshua started the process, but did he finish it? He did not finish it, right? The Tanakh criticizes him. He was a righteous man, no doubt. He was a great man, righteous man, but the Tanakh criticizes him for not getting the job done. They never conquered the whole land. And they never established in an ideal world what should have happened was Yoshua should have finished the conquest, settled all the tribes. They would have elected him as the king because the Torah requires, or one of the 613 commandments is when you get to your land, you should establish a kingdom. You have to appoint a king and establish a kingdom. So in theory, what we would think should have happened, Yoshua should have conquered the land, settled everybody down. The job would have been done. The tribes would have unified, created the kingdom. And Yoshua, or maybe somebody after him, maybe Otniel, who came after him from the tribe of Yehuda, should have been the king, should have been elected king. And that's it. And that, there's no reason why that person couldn't have been Mashiach. They could have built the temple, established Jerusalem, built the temple, and that would have been it. But Yoshua didn't accomplish it. And then it just continued that way. And so now we have this strange period of about five centuries, or almost five centuries, where we're in between. It's kind of like a state, but it's not a kingdom. It doesn't have a king. There's no temple. There's a mishkan. There's a lot of fighting between the tribes. They're not unified at all. Lots of civil wars amongst the Jews, amongst the actual tribes. They're fighting each other. There's a lot of oppression. And who are the leaders of the Jews at this time? They are judges, shoftim. You really have to, it's one of the neglected books of the Tanakh, but we have to really study that book. It's so important. The book of Judges of Shoftim. What is the purpose of that book? If you, what is the common refrain in that book? Exactly, exactly. What you see over and over again, or at least a couple of times in the book is, Bayamim ha'em ein melech be'Israel. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Ish ha'yashar be'enav And every person did whatever they felt like. And the book of Judges presents a state of Israel that's not really a state, that's always at war with external enemies, internal enemies, and that does not really have such great leaders. Yoshua was a great leader. Otniel was a great leader. Dvorah was a great leader. But then there were others who were not so great who are actually described as perhaps even being wicked, right? The Shoftim were not all righteous. And some of them were not, they, they were kind of elected. They were basically, took their positions by common kind of public consensus. They weren't particularly divine always. You know, Samson had this divine ability. But even Shimshon, even he was criticized for making certain errors. So we have this strange period of Shoftim, which sounds very reminiscent of what we have today, which is a state that's not the state that we want. It's not a divine kingdom. It's not really a, that kind of theocratic monarchy that it should be. You have these leaders that are, some are righteous, some are not. Some are just really elected by their fellow man. Their job is mainly military, right? Most of the book of Shoftim describes these leaders as military leaders. They're warriors. There's civil wars amongst the Jews, amongst the tribes of Israel and wars with many, all these surrounding kingdoms. So when you read Shoftim, and of course, people acting immorally in the land, in God's land, everybody does whatever, everybody does whatever they want. The description of the book of Shoftim is pretty much the description of the modern state of Israel. It's an in-between. We don't have the kingdom that we want, but we're kind of in the process of moving towards. That makes sense? That makes perfect sense. So, where am I going with this? If you look at the Shoftim, how many Shoftim did we have? There's different ways of counting, but we usually say we had 15 Shoftim. The era of Shoftim lasted 15 people. 
Yoshua is usually counted as the first, and Shmuel, I mean, Yoshua is the first, and Shmuel is usually the last. And then because after Shmuel, Shmuel then anoints the first king, Shaul. So you have 15 judges, meaning it took 15 judges to go from the beginnings of that redemption to an actual kingdom with a divinely appointed king anointed by a prophet. It took us 15 to get to some semblance of a unified kingdom, a proper divine kingdom. So the suggestion here, and this is my own speculation. This is not something that I got from anywhere. This is only my own speculation. If it took 15 judges to get to the state that was wanted or almost to get to that back then, could it take another 15 in our modern day and age where we have the state of Israel? The state of Israel is led by prime ministers. They are not always righteous, to say the least. They are mostly military, like they're all basically military people for the most part. Uh, who they're were? Female. Yeah, I'll get to all the. They're very similar. They, the prime ministers of Israel can you can make the connection between the prime ministers of Israel and the shoftim, and I know this sounds very radical, but actually when you look inside, it's pretty incredible because when you look at the the shoftim, the first one was Yoshua, then Otniel, then Ehud, and then Dvora. Dvora was the first of the, the fourth. Sorry, the fourth judge was Dvora. She's the only female. And if you look at the prime ministers of Israel, who was the fourth prime minister of Israel? Golda Meir, the only female among the list. And there is one of the shoftim is mentioned in one sentence briefly. And so he's not actually included as one of the shoftim. He's not one of the 15, but he's there on the list. And his name was Shamgar. And also at the same time, corresponding to that, you have Igal Alon. Yigal Alon is also, he was right before Golda Meir. So you have Shamgar right before Dvora. Dvora mentions in her song Shamgar. So you have this Shofet who's not included in the official list, perhaps because he just, he was too quick his time. Shamgar is not included in the 15. He comes right before Dvora. And right before Golda Meir, you have Yigal Alon, who was the prime minister, but is not counted in the list of prime ministers because he was only a caretaker prime minister, an interim for a short amount of time. And you see all these very interesting connections between the list of prime ministers of Israel and the Shoftim. Like, pretty amazing. Sure Coincidence. Three times? <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't know. We don't know because the, the book of Shoftim is very terse in its description. Some Shoftim are only mentioned in one or two sentences by name. We don't really know much about them or what they did, right? It could very well be that <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. It's, it's very, uh, the description is very minimal. And altogether then, how many prime ministers have we had in Israel today? The official count's 14. That's the official count. And I say it's the official count because the 14th currently is counted as Yair Lapid. And Yair Lapid, I mean, technically he was also just a caretaker prime minister. He didn't actually serve as the head of a working Knesset, that the government was dissolved. And I don't know why they counted him as a prime minister, but Igal alone was not counted as a prime minister. I think it's part of their deal. It's because of the deal that exactly, they had made. Exactly. It's but, one. Yeah. He'll, get a deal, he'll serve some, he'll serve right. some, and it's, it's right. one. Basically. But ultimately, was he an actual prime minister of a, of a working government? He was not, because no, the, the Knesset was dissolved. And so he was right. just okay. acting prime but minister you know, until the election. Know. Well, Naftali Bennett was an actual prime oh, minister. Exactly, yeah. he, he functioned at the head of an actual government. Right. But Yair Lapid didn't. So right. the official count is Yair Lapid's number 14. So my suggestion is, and this is totally speculative, again, we're not supposed to count when Mashiach will come. We're not supposed to make calculations. We know that. Nonetheless, everybody who's said in the past not to make calculations made a calculation. So um, all the greats did it, even though they warned not to do it, but they did it. The idea being that it's only a speculation. You're not supposed to say definitively, I know when Mashiach will come, it'll be in this year. You can't do that. Because nobody knows. So nobody knows. But are we allowed to speculate and give people hope? Sure, we can. So could it be that it took 15 judges before to get to a divine kingdom in Israel? Could it be that it takes 15 modern day judges to do it again? Let's see. I think it's, uh, it's possible. Or it could be wrong. It could be a few years from now you're going to say, look, you see, there's a 16th prime minister. It didn't happen. We'll see. 
Also, Shaul was not the perfect king. It took another couple of people until he got to David. So it's a process. Uh, but we're definitely along in that process.